Welcome to NCBA's Cattleman's Call podcast with host Lane Nordland. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cattleman's Call podcast. Lane Nordland here, and we're broadcasting today from the Micro Technologies Cattleman's Connection booth at the 2022 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. And obviously, this show is coming out after the event wrapped up in Houston, Texas, but over 6,000 cattlemen and women attending the event, learning about the latest innovations in the industry on the trade show floor and learning through the Cattlemen's Colleges. But also, I'm excited today to be joined by one of the key advocates in the industry here today, California's Marky Hageman. Uh, she joins us here today. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And also uh, joining uh, Marky and I is Chandler Mulvaney with the NCBA. Thanks for being here. That's right. Thank you, Lane. We appreciate the time to chat a little bit about advocacy. Also, we have Paul Debedal with us here today, with also with NCBA. And uh, what, pa- Paul, what is your uh, position with NCBA? So I exclusively work on the Masters of Beef Advocacy Program, which is um, the ones who awarded Marky our Advocate of the Year Award this year. She had an outstanding nomination and well deserved. Great. And Chandler, yourself, a quick introduction as well with your role with uh, NCBA. Yeah, excellent follow up. So, uh, for everybody listening, my name is Chandler Mulvaney, and I lead our grassroots advocacy and spokesperson development program. So, Paul and I work very closely together on a day to day basis, and it's just an absolute pleasure to uh, take everything from our collective experiences growing up in the beef community and then apply that to our passion for, for advocacy and making sure that the beef community is safeguarded in, in the best way possible. Yeah. And the best way to, to safeguard is to educate and have those folks that uh, are true advocates getting out on so many different platforms, in person, on social media, and engaging not only with other producers, but with those consumers as well. And, and Marky, uh, uh, before we talk about being uh, advocate of the year, well, let's just talk about your background growing up in agriculture and uh, your journey to becoming an advocate and also advocate of the year. Well, so I guess long story short, um, I didn't grow up in the ranching industry. I didn't grow up in production ag. Um, I grew up riding horses and I actually ended up, you know, moving to Alabama and I joined the cattlemen's there and I fell in love with the industry and my mom and my stepdad really helped like nurture that. Mm -hmm. Um, They, my dad, my stepdad has a commercial herd and you know, they got married when I was older. So I had nothing to do with it, but um, I lived with them and I got to see what he did on a day to day basis. And I realized pretty quickly that there were, there's a lot of misinformation about agriculture and ranching, you know, in just everywhere in society. Mm -hmm. And I decided I had a knack for social media and I thought I could tell stories. I can be that advocate. And somewhere along the way, I decided I'm going to have my own cattle. So I started my own herd, my own cow calf herd in 2020, and I'm slowly growing it. We had so our cool. first, I know we had our first calving season and we survived that thankfully. Um, and that was just this past Christmas. So, so when, when I just think that's so cool because so many people would maybe be a little hesitant to, to step up and advocate and, and think, oh, I just haven't been involved in the industry my whole life, yada, yada, yada. But that's just somebody's preconceived notion and and for you to come in and say you know what I want my own herd I want to talk about what my mom and stepdad do what what really drove you to be like you know what I'm I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing along the way and and truly advocate for the industry well just because I think people just want to vilify ranchers and I felt like I, I I wanted to have like a very um, unbiased viewpoint of it because I come from you know not knowing the ranching industry um, and I've seen you know the more intricate parts of it and I I know you know tons and tons of ranchers and I wanted to because I know how intimidating it is to share your story I'm scared all the time to be posting what I post but. I knew that it was important because people need to see that and someone has to step up. Someone has to. So I just decided I'm going to insert myself. I'm going to learn what I need to learn and I'm just going to continue to show up. And it's turned out pretty well, I think. It's just, you know, I'm constantly having to like 
fight that fear yeah. and just realize that there's a bigger purpose I'm serving. Who are some of the folks out there that have helped you fight through that fear? Uh, being a mentor, uh, educational resources. Uh, well, let's just talk about the, the folks that are, are a support system for you as well. Well, I'm going to start with these two guys next to me, <laughs> um, which Chandler and I just recently started working together with, you know, this program, but we knew each other in Alabama. And, um, you know, I, I was really thankful for the MBA program because that's the very first thing I did with advocacy. You know, that's the first thing I, I went to when I realized that it was a thing mm -hmm. and I completed my certificate in 2017 and I, learned so much about the beef industry and just like you know educating or I guess educating is not the great word but you know connecting with consumers through the Masters of Beef Advocacy Program um, so ever since then ever you know since 2017 I've been able to reach out to anyone and say hey I need a resource for this mm -hmm. or you know I can go to our Facebook page or you know I can go to the Beef It's What's For Dinner website and those have been really great resources for me um, but otherwise like my my cattlewomen's group uh, they've been amazing I I've learned so much from them and they're constantly like supporting me and helping me and you know teaching me how to do things and you know like my mom and my stepdad you know they they've they continue to be a great role model so I just try to like you know get material from all these people that I've known throughout the years and it's been really great really beneficial so what has been one of the most uh, popular posts or, or uh, uh, you know message that you've shared out there on these different platforms well, so for anyone not familiar with my uh, social media page, it's Girls Eat Beef Too. And I do a lot of memes. Uh, and one of my most popular memes actually is a scene from Miss Congeniality. <laughs> and it's where she's up on stage and then, um, oh, I forget what the actor's name is that's asking her this question. But, you know, he says, what, what is, you know. Is it William Shatner? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. How did I forget that? Um, but, you know, it, he's asking her, like, what, what does society need? And like, so she answers, you know, whatever she answers. And then she's like, in world peace. Um, but I turned that around and I said, you know, uh, consumers need to be able to like connect with their ranchers and they need to like search for, you know, where their food comes from and like learn about it before they just judge the industry. And um, so that's been one of my most popular uh, posts, but my memes are probably my most, my most popular things. And I just turn you know, things that are like more pop culture related yeah. and I turn those into agriculture. And I think that's just a really cool like bridge. It's just a really cool connecting piece. So I think that that content goes over well. How many uh, impressions did you get on that one? Do you think fr Ooh. just from, you know, you putting it out there and not from people stealing it probably and putting it out there too <laughs> at the screenshot, but, but just yourself, you know, I'm not a great social media uh, manager in that sense because <laughs> I haven't looked at the impressions. I know I had in the first time I posted it, I had um, almost 3000 likes on that one. Um, and then I posted it again since then, yeah. but um, I would have to look at my impressions cause I don't know. I know I get, I get a lot of engagement, but it was fun. You know what's frustrating, though, as I mentioned, when folks do steal content and memes and don't give credit or, or back, because I shared one. I had this picture of this T-bone steak uh, that I had, and it's when everyone was getting all, all upset about Bill Gates' comments about mm -hmm. uh, uh, consuming uh, 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 um, alternative uh, protein or uh, uh, alternatively raised protein. And I just said, don't focus on Bill Gates's comments. Let's take this as an opportunity to mm -hmm. advocate for industry. Industry. I got a lot of shares. And then another group shared it and had 123,000 shares I saw oh the other day. God. This is over a year ago. That's wow. frustrating, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I've had, I've had someone actually take a meme that I created and recreate it themselves with their, their logo on it. Yeah. And luckily, I, uh, I, I have the bravery uh, of, I don't know, a warrior or something. And I reached out to them and I said, that's not okay. Yeah. But yeah, it does happen. It happens a lot. So. What, what's your advice for someone tuning in that has accidentally maybe just wanted to share that on social media? Maybe it's a certain generation that uh, likes to do that. I, I've kind of ran into that. What, uh, what's your advice and, and what's your plea with folks just to make sure people get credit as a part of, because it is a part of advocacy, and it's great to get a little bit of credit on that. Oh yeah, well, it's kind of like it's your creative work, right? And you feel like you want to have that recognition because it, 
I, I could sit there for hours and hours trying to come up with a meme. Like it, it's a lot of work and it's more emotional than you think. Um, and so when someone does that, I just try to post like, hey guys, I love that you're supporting my work. Um, just try to tag me if you can. And I reach out to those, you know, other organizations and other, you know, people who share it and then, you know, don't really give the appropriate credit. And I just try to be understanding like, hey, I know you love this. But, you know, can you just, like, tag me next time? Most people are very understanding if mm -hmm. you're just, like, you know, really, um, you know, approachable about yeah. it. Well, uh, I guess I should let Chandler and Paul say some stuff, too. Yeah, I guess um, they're, they're just going to sit. And, no. <laughs> We're uh, just here to listen. <laughs> and okay. uh, obviously, uh, and again, congratulations Thank on uh, getting that recognition of Advocate of the Year. But, uh, uh, Chandler, do you want to talk more about what that award entails? Or, or is that Paul? Do, who, who wants to cover that? I think I was just going to speak a little bit on, you know, the testament of the connection within the beef yeah. community. And so I know Mark, you mentioned that both of us obviously having a connection to Alabama and Alabama Cattlemen's Association. And so as someone who grew up in that environment of, of interacting as not only a member of a state-based beef council, but also of NCBA and having that connection with Marky, e, I think back when... I was in high school or early college years and, and we're both around the kind of that same chapter of life just goes to show uh, how incredible one's journey can be starting to share in, in this case her story and so I just want to elevate that and make sure that that's that's known to everyone listening and yeah. so to Marky's uh, just recognition with the MBA advocate of the year is, is just really neat to see her her progress and her her advancements and sharing those stories on behalf of beef producers in, in a really neat yep. way. But I'll let Paul talk a little bit about the MBA program. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think first I want to say, too, that I think Marky, the, M, the MBA Advocate of the Year Award is really geared at recognizing advocates who they embody really what it means to be a beef advocate and, and sharing their story and, and sharing content that will connect with consumers mm -hmm. and, and getting that message out there. And I think Marky really embodies that. Um, I first met Marky a few years ago when I actually had just started at NCBA a month into the job um, and she came in for our top of the class program at the time and she stood out to me then and I think as Chandler said too it's been it's been cool over these last couple of years to see that progression and to see her continue to grow um, and, and, and share out the resources that we're sharing um, in MBA just like she had mentioned and, and talked about before that the MBA program is here to, to help um, advocates to, to better share their story with resources and whether that's completing the modules here the front end but we want to continue to, to inform them and, and give them the tools that they need and, and Marky takes those tools and runs with them and you know my wife gets really mad at me she has a juris doctorate she's a lawyer and uh, so obviously she's worked her butt off with degrees but I always tell people like I have an MBA mm. she goes Lane I'm like I have an MBA a master's in beef advocacy but, you right. know, it's been quite some time since I've gone through that program How, what, what are some options refresher courses uh, yeah. what's kind of that that time limit because it's so important though for folks to to understand uh sharing facts sharing science and, and science is changing all the time and that's a big part of mba is just being able to share the real facts about beef absolutely well um, if it's been a couple of years since someone has gone through and completed mba um, about a year ago actually last february um, we launched a whole new set of modules um, called MBA Next Gen. So the model, the modules that you went through a couple of years ago don't look the same. It's got a new feel. It's a better user experience. Um, we've put updated current facts. It takes less time to go through it now. Each uh, module, um, which there's five of them, take about half an hour to go through, but it's self-paced at your own time. When you've got, got a chance, you can go in, do one at a time or all of them um, together uh, as well. So it's definitely encourage you if you haven't checked it out to check it out or if it's been a while, check it out. We've got updated information in there. And I think just to continue on, on, on Paul's positive comments about the MBA program, we also offer a lot of in-person trainings that are customizable to either state beef councils, affiliates, and yeah. organizations that are involved in, in the agriculture or even in the non-agriculture space because taking the stories similar to Marky and other advocates that have progressed their way through the MBA and are now certified and, and want to learn more and engage at a higher level um, we are just excited, and again, it's such an honor just to be able to train and equip and prepare those advocates and, and sharing their stories with media. 
Well, and that's one thing, too, is uh, uh, when, like, I, I always use myself as, as an example because, oh, I, I know myself. Oh, I think I do. But when, when I travel so much, they, the people see you in a cowboy hat walking around, and mm -hmm. they always ask those questions. And I know I, I try to go back and find those resources just to refresh uh, my memory because I talk for a living. But sometimes you need to have that little dossier mm -hmm. uh, to be able to look mm -hmm. at that and talk about the different aspects of corn-fed production, of grass-fed production, of water usage and uh, there might be folks thinking well I've, I've ranched my whole life I don't need a, and you it, 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 we're not we're not uh, questioning your credibility and your experience and your hard work but it's just something to give you that upper edge when someone is asking you why do you produce beef yeah, I think it's so important to point out sure and and I couldn't agree more and I think it'd be interesting to hear Marky's perspective as as an advocate who's out there actively doing this on a daily basis but I think what's always interesting anytime you're in a producer environment and this is no discredit to the stories that need to be shared and and that need to be continually improved as we engage as advocates but I think sometimes we get so caught up in sharing our stories that we we forget to stay on message and so it's so easy to just uh, you know, share what would have been a, a 20 to 25 second sound bite, and then that turns into a, a two and a half minute story and people have disengaged. So yep. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Marky. Well, I think it just, it like it finesses your ability to share that message. And I think that's important because having a clear, like cohesive um, message is going to make the advocacy, you know, efforts stronger. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, like it just, it, it's beneficial because you you have to know I think there's a disconnect between producers and consumers because sometimes the producers think the consumer consumers want to know something that they really don't want to know yeah. and so like the MBA program is really good about really focusing your attention on the the important things that people are asking and then you know helping you answer that because you don't want to have to like rely on your experience all the time like you want to know just a really good like professional answer because sometimes that's just going to be the most effective message yeah. and just imagine when the founders uh the when the concept of uh, mba first came around there wasn't social media to the to the extent and mm -hmm. uh whatnot and who would have believed that a meme and everyone thinks meme has to be funny memes are just just anything that shares information whether that's knowledge or humor so how has uh, MBA and its resources and your knowledge changed and grown on your social media following? I mean, how big is your following? So I just hit 14,000 yesterday. Um, and that's exciting because, you know, I was not active on it for the first couple of years that I had it in 2017. Um, top of the class was when I really like honed in on my message and was able to create basically I rebranded. Um, but the MBA program has helped me because I've been able to utilize that information that I've learned and use the community that I, I think that's the most important thing is the community that I've, you know, found through that because those people, the, the people who have been advocating for years and, you know, they are like multi-generational ranchers, they've been able to support me mm -hmm. and been able to like say, you're, what you're doing is great. Like share, I'm going to share your stuff. And so I think the community has been the most important thing um, to grow my following. I, it, it's not me. I don't think it's me that's doing it because I'm not great with social media and you know that kind of aspect. I don't follow a lot of the trends, but being able to um, network and have those connections and the people who do care about my message and just really focusing on my story, like my vulnerability and like what's unique to me, so many other people are resonating with that. And that's what's important. I, I like that's what I, that vulnerability. I think is so important because there probably is people brand new to agriculture. Maybe they've uh, married a spouse. Their spouse is in agriculture. Maybe their neighbors in agriculture, and they're starting their own herd or just in, into the uh, wanting to get into the rural lifestyle. What what is your message to people in general that are just hesitant about being an advocate, thinking they can't do it? So I actually, last night, I got to meet a couple different women who are in their collegiate cattle uh, women's groups or cattlemen's groups. And it was nice because they were telling me kind of the same thing. They said, I'm not in, you know, the cattle industry. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm getting my animal science degree or, you know, I, someone came from, you know, sheep background. And they asked me, like, you know, what advice do you have? 
And for me, honestly, the only thing I, I've been able to really like rely on is the fact that I, I'm just fearless about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, like I said earlier, I'm inserting myself. I'm taking it. I'm taking that responsibility and saying, I'm going to do this regardless of what anyone else thinks. For me, it's just you have to be stubborn. You have to be stubborn. I think to be in any part of this industry, you have to just be like, I'm going to do this no matter how I need to. I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, but just being practical about it, I think like with advocacy and beginner ranching stuff, you are going to make mistakes. You have to start out small. You have to start out just trying to learn as you go. Mm -hmm. And again being willing to you know make mistakes being willing to be you know exposing yourself a little bit with advocacy and ranching you have to do that that's the only way you can grow that's the only way you connect with people that's that's what it is it, there's no secret like ingredient or anything like that it's just you got you got to do it I'm so much enjoying our conversation, but we are just going to pause and take a quick commercial break for today's podcast sponsor from our friends with Micro Technologies. Micro Technologies is the leading provider of advanced, comprehensive, and integrated animal management systems and solutions for beef producers. Since 1971, Micro has established an unparalleled track record of delivering meaningful technology solutions based upon a business philosophy centered around three principles, innovation, value creation, and service. Micro's team is driven to understand and provide customized solutions to the dynamically changing needs of your business. Reach out to your local representative today or find us online at microtechnologies.com. And again, a big thank you to our friends at Micro Technologies for sponsoring our podcast booth here at the Cattlemen's Connection booth and today's podcast as well. I'm excited today to be joined by one of the key advocates in the industry here today, California's Marky Hageman. So how has participating in the MBA program, uh, being an advocate on social media, how has that made you a better cattle producer in your young venture? Well, okay, so I started MBA and BQA at the same time um, in 2017. I got both of those, you know, certifications like right away. Everything I knew about the beef industry was from those two platforms at that time because I didn't know in 2017, I didn't know the different breeds of cattle. I didn't know the different sectors. I didn't know cow calf. I didn't know stalker background. I didn't know any of that. Um, so, and of course I didn't know, I'm going to admit this guys. I am not good in the kitchen. I am not good in the kitchen. So I am though. So <laughs> oh, okay. that. well, yeah. you'll, you'll make up for that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like, so, you know, masters of beef advocacy isn't just about ranching. It's about, you know, actual like nutrition of beef and like, how do you prepare it in the kitchen? What are the best cuts? And I was not, I am not good with that. My fiance is the one who takes control of that. But those messages, like it taught me a lot about that. Like now I can kind of, um, you know, communicate with people about like, here's what you should look for, like in your meat. Here's what, you know, the nutritional, like, you know, profile of steak is. And that's really important because, you know, it helps it helps make an advocate diverse, you know, because some people can be really strong ranchers, maybe not very great in the kitchen or vice versa. Maybe it's people who don't have any cattle, but they, you know, have, they love, they're a chef or, you know, they just love to cook. They're a mom that loves to cook. And so like the MBA program really helps just round you out and it teaches you everything about that. So that was a very, very crucial tool that, I mean, I still use, I need to go back through and uh, do the program again because it's all updated, right? <laughs> but, um, and you know, BQA, I have to, you know, redo every three years, I think is what it is. Mm -hmm. But those two things have been like just instrumental yep. in everything I've done. Like that is why I'm here. Can, can I ask uh, your fiance, were, were they involved in agriculture or uh, are they a part of your adventure too? Or are they off doing their own thing? Well, they, he is a uh, part of the venture whether he wants to be or not, <laughs> um, because I, I need him. He's uh, big enough to handle my calves. Um, he was actually, he's in the wine industry in California. Really? Yeah. So we actually make wine uh, with his family. So Getting a good cab sob. 
We do. We do. We make I'll caps stop off. Stop by sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on over. Okay. It's uh, we'll be serving it at our wedding, so feel free to stop by. I, I, I uh, sing at weddings, so maybe I'll just come be your Adam Sandler. There you go. You know what? We need someone, so you're hired. Uh, <laughs> Why not just do a, a live podcast from the wedding? We could do interview that. your yes. guests. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Paul and I could actually just we, we and Chandler. Chandler could be the field reporter, and Paul yes. and I. It could be like almost like a golf tournament where we're oh, talking yeah. really softly right up there. Yeah. Yes, just I love our narrating the whole thing. <laughs> Her narrate my flowing in the wind <laughs> there's a hint of beef in the air as the prime rib cooks mm. slowly across the way okay sorry getting back on uh so he's in the wine business as well yes he he did not it's i just joke about it because he is not an animal guy yep. whatsoever and i've made him that way um but he's very supportive and i think that's important we round each other out so uh, w- with your operation, are there plans to do uh, farm to plate, to serve some wine with it? What, what is the future of your operation? And what do you call your operation? So my like cattle side is Bar and Bar Cattle Co. That's just you know my brand there. Um, we do plan on having a direct consumer beef business. Um, we have, like I said, we have our first calves on the ground. So we'll, um, we have two bull calves that will be you know, selling and, you know, offering for beef later on this year. Um, eventually, I would love to incorporate the wine and the beef. Mm-hmm. Um, his sister is actually a winemaker. So uh, we have everything that we need to, uh, you know, have that, but that's long term. Yeah. Um, so right now, I'm just, I am slowly growing. I have less than 10 head. Um, I'm just trying to get a grasp on everything that, you know, it takes to be a rancher and we're trying to learn how to expand in California uh, which you know presents its own challenges but right now I'm just kind of enjoying like learning everything about it and just falling more in love with the beef industry. Uh, Marky how in your opinion can consumers be advocates for us as well? I've had some really good interactions when actually speaking of DC I've been to DC and met a person from Chicago that was a part of the Biden administration that uh, walked up to me because I was wearing a cowboy hat and when I'm out public speaking I share this story so I'm not giving too much away here on this because you know I like being a keynote speaker at events guys but um, she was such a huge advocate for the beef industry because she had met other producers she'd met farmers and ranchers and she had done her research as well and mm. the benefits of beef and its nutrition nutritional value she can be more of an advocate than i can with her friends in the big city of chicago what what is your take on that on how consumers how you can help educate consumers so they can be advocates for us as well well, to me, everything's about the connection. Like, I have to have that relationship with people, and I think it goes both ways, right? The the consumer, you know, should have a relationship, too. If, if they're interested in where their food comes from and they, they care about that, then I hope that they are doing that research. I hope that if they find my platform in whatever way, that they feel welcomed to ask questions and I have people who do message me and they do ask questions and some of them are very difficult questions you know the controversial stuff and to me it's all about just transparency I there I cannot be the kind of person that just like sugarcoats things I I have to be real that's just me Um, and so with consumers I hope that they they can find someone that they trust and I know that's hard especially like I live in California and people think that that's not, you know, heavily agriculture, but it is. (laughs) I mean, I live in, you know, one of the biggest agricultural places of the world. And, you know, luckily most of our, you know, most of my consumers, most of the people that are going to buy my beef product are coming from that. So they kind of know. So like with my conversation, it's probably going to be more about grass fed versus grain grain finished, Mm -hmm. right? Like I'm going to have that conversation, but like to reach someone who might be in Chicago or someone who might maybe from LA. um, I hope that I can run into them, you know, when I'm doing like when I'm traveling or when I'm, you know, just doing other things, hiking, kayaking. And I hope that I can just have that conversation. Um, But I think it's just, it's on all of us to connect with each other. I think it's so easy to just go to Google or go on Facebook and like, you know, stay inside your echo chamber, right? Um, And I think that you have to get a little bit of uncomfortable and you have to look at both sides. You have to, you know, uh, search up those people that can answer those questions and, you know, ask critical questions. 
Now, guys, obviously, we want more people to participate in the MBA program, and uh, I guess there's a new program that's also uh, uh, that has been announced. Uh, Chandler, do you want to talk about uh, what we're calling the uh, Trailblazers program? Yeah, it's it's really an exciting time to be involved with our beef advocacy training and engagement efforts at NCBA, and on behalf of our entire team, it's just really again an incredible incredible blessing to be a manager and contractor to the beef checkoff. And so I think everything that Marky shared and that we've kind of discussed uh, today has really shown the success of the MBA program as a part of the beef checkoff and and really paying off for what producers invest into on a day-to-day basis. So uh, the Trailblazers program is just building on that continued success of MBA. And Trailblazers have started this past year and we have our inaugural cohort and it's a group of 10 trailblazers who will uh, work to uh, just be trained equipped and and go out and build on conversations and really be activated with members of the media so to marky's point a few moments ago seeking out those opportunities to be more active in local communities and expand upon our grassroots efforts, engage in those conversations, and not be as reactive moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on that? Well, I am going to be participating in the Trailblazers program, so I'm really excited because I think as advocates we also need to continue our education. We need to brush up on our skills, and there's always something new to learn. I mean, social media advocacy I think is changing you know uh, just as much as science is you know everything just changes so much so I'm really excited to participate in this and learn how to be more effective with my message sorry I just saw custard from Culver's everyone's packing the custard from Culver's around right now and I'm like Uh, where'd Sarah go? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, no. I, I actually just watched them put it out on the table right there, and I think mm. they just packed it all up, Lane. So oh, uh, fresh out. Uh, okay, Chandler, I'm sorry to cut you off. The <laughs> custard uh, caught me off guard. It's okay. It's been a long convention. It caught me off guard as well. So. <laughs> oh, I, sorry. They're carrying coolers. Okay, let's yeah. get back to the podcast. We can guys. go grab some. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think what really ec- excites me the most about the Trailblazers program is having individuals like Marky as a part of this inaugural cohort. So uh, we really haven't uh, been proactive in the past and engaging with those stories. And so this group of 10 from six state beef councils is really going to do an incredible job at just portraying the daily lifestyle of cattle producers across the country. So I'm just really excited to get working with them in the next couple of weeks, starting with a a virtual kickoff event and then doing several in-person elements over the course of the next year. And as uh, we look at this, obviously it's a great way to advocate more, to get more involvement with it. And um, Paul, as we look for people that are listening to this show that are just maybe a little hesitant, maybe they haven't heard about it before, maybe they're just, I don't have time to participate. How easy, how easy is it to get an MBA? It's, it takes not as much time as you think it will. It, it honestly, like you could go minute by minute if you really had to break it down, if you only had a minute to, to get started, start there. Um, it's, it's, it's as easy as going to the masters of beef advocacy.com to get started. You sign up, you can get enrolled. And, and we, we really want to just help not hold your hand necessarily through the whole thing, but we're there every step of the way to to troubleshoot and to help you get involved, whatever that looks like. I mean, advocacy can be as easy as talking to someone when you're in line at the grocery store to doing something like Marky's doing with the whole social media um, and, and sharing your story online. So it really can look any which way and we can help help you however that should look for you. And as uh, we have all those advocates out in the countryside, uh, Marky, what's your advice to folks, since you are the advocate of the year, what, uh, what's your advice to all those other advocates that uh, are doing this day in and day out on behalf of their own family businesses and U.S. producers nationwide? What's words of encouragement? What's words of encouragement to those that really maybe don't, haven't, haven't uh, felt like they can advocate but uh, really could? Well, the most important thing is to remember that your story matters. Your voice is important. It's very much needed. And you, like I said before, I keep saying it, you have to insert yourself. You have to take it upon yourself to say, I am going to communicate my story because that's what's going to help advocate. That's what's going to help with the beef industry. Like 
it's the most important thing. People, I think, don't put a lot of weight on advocacy, but that's really, you know, what's helping us. And I think that I, I just hope that people can see my story and see that I didn't even know what I was doing five years ago and I've gotten here and it's taken a lot of hard work, perseverance, you know, a lot of like doubting myself, but I just was consistent. I continued to strive to learn more myself and to become a better advocate, to become, you know, a uh, stronger um, uh, communicator. And now I'm here. And I think that that speaks a lot for, you know, people who feel like maybe they don't belong or they're not qualified. Mm -hmm. Like as long as you are working hard and trying to show that you're doing this work, you're going to be able to do it. Yep. And, and at the end of the day, I just wanted to touch on a couple of thoughts that Marky just mentioned. That's what really matters is figuring out that starting point. And so in, in our programs at NCBA, in advocating on, on behalf of the beef community, it, it really is important to acknowledge that everyone has a story. And so just getting out, starting to share, starting to recognize those some of those low-hanging fruit opportunities, whether it's working with a 4-H club or an FFA chapter, yeah. getting involved with your community leadership or elected officials, it's it's really easy to start in your own backyard and not forget that there are incredible opportunities in that community. And then as you begin to grow, look for those those chances to get involved with your state beef council and, and interact with Paul and I, because that's what we're here for. Yeah. And without the support of beef producers like Marky, our advocate of the year, we, we wouldn't even be here having this conversation. Yep. Paul, any last thoughts? Well, I think the, the MBA program um, and, and our beef advocacy programs are at a really exciting time with the rollout of Trailblazers. MBA just hit 20,000 MBA graduates here um, very recently. So I think there's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of people in that community. So if you have no idea where to start, like Chandler said, start where you're at um, and, and go through, start by getting your MBA. And next up, join the MBA Facebook group. And if you're having issues or you're not quite sure where to start, ask that question yep. in, in these spaces because there, there's not just us that's there to help, but a lot, an, uh, an army of advocates really to, to help you out in that journey. Well, again, it's an exciting future for uh, uh, producers here in the U.S. and the industry, especially when we have advocates that can tell our story. And the more advocates out there, the more consumers understand what we mm -hmm. do. Uh, friends, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, Paul, Chandler, and Marky, again, congratulations on being Advocate of the Year. And uh, check out uh, getting your MBA at Masters of Beef Advocacy Online. And, uh, again, congratulations to Marky. And uh, I look forward to getting a Cab Sov bottle sometime. And uh, congratulations <laughs> also on your uh, nuptials uh, coming up here soon, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you, Lane. Thanks. All right, friends, that'll do it for today's Cattleman's Call podcast. I'm Lane Nordland. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in to NCBA's Cattleman's Call podcast with Lane Nordland. For more information, visit ncba.org and make sure to subscribe to the podcast today.